Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. And we're gonna finish up the Doom board game. We are gonna move on to the big bad cyber demon here. He's a big boy. He's fun. He'll, he's gonna take up some time, so just be prepared for that. He's not gonna be horribly time consuming. Heck, to be honest, he probably won't take as long as you will end up taking to paint all of the imps or all of the possessed soldiers. But he is a big boy, and he's fun to paint, and he's extra shiny there because we did something... Well, I mean, he's he's, he's regularly shiny for what would be a gloss varnish, uh, but we're going to go over a fun varnish that we're going to do. Stay tuned for that because it's a little bit of a little bit of a special thing that I'm going to show off here. So let me stop rambling around. Let's, uh, let's just get on to the miniature. Now the first thing that we will start with with the Cyber Demon is a solid layer of Angel Green. And that will just be really, really simple for starting with because there's a lot of green on the miniature. All of the chitin, all of the sort of armor on the Cyber Demon is supposed to be this green color. So if you start with just a base coat of that, you can do either the paint like this, which I've got, or it looks like they do have a primer available. So if you do want to buy that separately, it will probably be a lot faster to just do a spray primer. But you can do whatever you want. It doesn't particularly matter. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to focus on all of the lowest recesses of the actual model. In this case, it's going to be the flesh because sort of the inner layer is flesh and then working your way out, you get to the cybernetic bits and then uh, further out, you get into all of the chitin. So we're going to start with some Warlock purple right here. I wouldn't concern yourself too much with the details right now. I would just focus on getting all the flesh bits. And this is admittedly kind of one of the more complicated parts of the Cyber Demon, is just trying to figure out from the model what's flesh and what's chitin. So you just sort of have to, you know, use your best judgment. I'm going to start with the face because I think the face is pretty much all completely flesh except for the big horns on the top. Uh, I'm going to go over the teeth. I'm not going to be worried about the teeth right now. But yeah, just go over all of the face. And we're going to work our way outward from there. All right, and then after you get the face, just sort of work your way around the face until you get to the chitin. It is pretty easy to tell uh, compared to other parts of the miniature where the flesh ends and the chitin begins. In this particular case, I think that uh, basically the entirety of the headpiece that goes into the miniature is all going to be flesh, and everything surrounding it is going to be chitin. So we're just going to go by that rule of thumb. Hi, Louise. Oh, we've got a cat on the table. Hopefully she won't be too obnoxious. Oh, she wants she wants to sit on my lap. Oh, and she's gonna tip the camera over. Careful, careful, Boo. Okay. I would say that the sort of top of his head, I would uh, sort of interpret that as chitin. And I'm just gonna go over the rest of it with this pink color. Because, I don't know, maybe the spine here is supposed to be sort of chitinous. But I'm not too worried about it. I, I think that uh, I think that if we just try to keep things a little bit streamlined and a little bit simplistic, then I think that we'll be in good shape. So I would just say leave the top of the head green, but then go over all of the rest of the spine with this warlock purple color. All right, I went over a little little part of the, the top of the head right there, but that's okay because I think what we're going to do is after we get all of our flesh tone figured out and all of it applied and, and done and all that, we're going to go back over the various chitin bits with angel green just to, like, touch up. You know, we're not going to redo all of the armor because that would take a lot of time if you wanted to, you know, basically do another coat of the armor, uh, but we will do that later on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the face and the top of the head right there. Uh, now, we're going to uh, continue looking about, and I think that the uh, the flesh coming out of the left arm, which becomes the cyber arm, I think that that's all supposed to be flesh. So just sort of work your brush into the... Oh, Louise, you're like right in front... Oh, my goodness. But you're going to... Yeah, just sort of get the flesh in between here, and don't worry about getting any of the pink color on the surrounding areas because yeah like I said we're gonna we're gonna touch up the chitin and then we're gonna go over the arm itself uh, with a different color later on so don't worry about it all 
So on the back of the shoulder here, there's some like kind of tubes and wires going from the arm to the sort of, I don't know, central processing unit, I guess you could say, you know, whatever. Uh, so, you know, you'll kind of notice those. You can just go over, you know, like obviously I did a very, very, very imperfect job right here. But I would say don't worry about it because we're going to go over those with a metallic color later on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the... Uh, left arm, which is the cyber arm. So now let's go ahead and move on to the right arm because there's a lot of flesh exposed over here. And I think that, yeah, here we go. Um, there's sort of like almost a piece of chitin that wraps all the way around the arm like so, but then the space above and below that is all supposed to be flesh. Yeah, sometimes you gotta work your brush into some weird positions for this miniature because there are some flesh bits in various sort of nooks and crannies all over the miniature. So just be prepared for that. All right, and I would just say that the entirety of the arm up to the forearm is probably flesh. All right, and getting into the chest is kind of where it gets a little bit more complicated. It's a, if it's a little bit, little bit weird, I would say. I think, just sort of looking at it, I think that it sort of comes up like this. Yeah, I would say that that sort of um, underarm right there is going to be flesh. That looks about right. All right, and that's it for the right arm, I think. Yeah, so just make sure that you get. The back of the arm is pretty prominent. Uh, the underarm on this side is a little bit more prominent. Like I said, it gets a little bit tricky to tell though, just because of the big like shoulder pad right here and the chest piece. But I think that in between there is supposed to be the sort of flesh color. So just be aware of that. Let's also knock out the hand while we're here too, because I think that the hand is supposed to be pretty fleshy here. Right, and then that's pretty much it for the hand. The hand is really, really simple. The hand is really rudimentary and, and uh, easy to go about. Next up, let's go ahead and do the sort of exposed guts right here. These are kind of fun because I think that, yeah, like I said, the, the guts are a little bit exposed. Not like disgustingly so or anything, but... And I think that the sort of like rib cage here is showing. You don't have to go, I would say, you know what? Yeah, I would say just go over the rib cage. We're gonna go over that with um, uh, sort of a, a, a just a fleshy color later on, which we're also going to use to dry brush all of the, uh, the pink that we have just done. But we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, I think that that's pretty much it. I think that you could basically just interpret everything beyond that, like if you're going, uh, you know, around the miniature, around the, the back of it like this. I would just interpret the rest of that as chitin and metallic and all that, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. You could get into his gut here a little bit. It's really hard to get in there without, you know, without going over the chitin itself, but I would say don't worry about it because, like I said earlier, we are going to go over the chitin. We're just going to touch up all of the chitin with the angel green color that we used as a base coat in the first place. So don't worry about it, just get on in there, get it done, that'll look, that's that's perfect, that'll do it. Okay, uh, and then yeah, the, the legs get a little bit tricky because the legs are very armored. Uh, I would say that below his groin right here and in between his thigh, you got some flesh going on there. And then I wouldn't really worry about anything on the back. I think that that's pretty good. I do, however, notice that there is some exposed flesh on the right leg on the back here. So let's go over that. Yeah, I think that that's pretty decent overall, I would say. All right, so let's just move our way down. Yeah, basically, like, when you're, when you're doing the flesh, just kind of do what I'm doing right now, which is that start with the head and sort of like go all around the miniature and just sort of like work your way down in a spiral almost. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. All right, we're going to wrap around to the front here. All right, I would say that that would be about it. Uh, let's continue on with, let's do the right leg. Uh, there's a lot of exposed flesh under here a lot of exposed muscle and, and that kind of thing. 
I'm gonna need to get out some more Warlock Purple. I've run out. Oh, my little paint bottle's almost empty. All right, now on his right leg right here, there's kind of like a big, almost piston coming out of his, uh, like his Achilles heel. So, you know, just take note of that. And it looks like it sort of extends below his feet a little bit. Like he's got a little bit of, uh, like some raised arches, cybernetically almost. A little, little funky. But, yeah, just be aware of those. Make sure to get in between each of the sort of cybernetic toes here. And then there's a little bit of flesh around the big cybernetic knee right here because his kneecap is very metallic. But I think that there's some flesh sort of surrounding it, so just make sure to get in there. All right, that's pretty much it for that leg. And then we're gonna move on to the left leg right here, which looks like there's some flesh around here. Not a lot. This leg is, is much more armored, much more chitinous. It's like this leg was almost, you know, his right leg was like almost blown apart by a lot more, you know, damage and, and all that. So the chitin is sort of like chipped away almost. Whereas the left leg is still pretty much intact, so there's still a lot of chitin here, so there's not as much flesh that you have to worry about. But there's still some, you know, on the back of the leg like that. And then, of course, his big exposed heel right here, which wraps around to the front of his foot. All right, so I think that that is pretty much it. Before I move on, I am just going to sort of look around to make sure that I didn't miss anything on the miniature, any, anything that might be standing out to me as like, oh, that should be flesh or whatever. I'm just going to sort of, you know, look all around it. I, I call it doing it a once-over, where you just look over everything once just to make sure that you didn't, didn't miss anything, just touch up anything that might be a little bit, uh, you know, thin or anything like that. Yeah, just kind of go all around. And I think that he's in pretty good shape here. Yeah, I would say so. I think that that's pretty decent overall. Okay, so I'm going to rinse off my brush. All right, and then now that we've got all of the flesh on there, we're going to soften it up a little bit. We're just going to sort of make it look a little bit less, less bright and flashy and almost neon colored and just sort of soften it to a little bit more of a flesh color. So we'll take out our barbarian flesh right here, and then we're going to use this to actually dry brush all of the flesh that we just did. Now, again, you're going to get some of this paint onto your chitin and all that. Again, I've said it like 14 times now, but uh, don't worry about it. Uh, throwing stuff around. Um, do, do not worry about it because we are going to go over, we're just going to touch up before we move on to anything else. So what I'll do is I'll take out a, a dry brush right here. This is an army painter dry brush. Uh, if, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos yet, just make sure, even if you don't have a dry brush, just try to make like, or try to get, you know, sort of a, a, a flat uh, brush that almost has like a sort of, you know, like I said, it's, it's almost flat like this. You can see how it's really thin there, but then from the side, it's it's really wide. If you have something like this, that would work just fine. You know, like I said, a sort of flat chisel sort of thing. This is the sort of thing that we're looking for right here. And to do dry brushing, you're just going to take your brush a little bit, and you're just going to sort of slightly nudge it into your little paint puddle, and you're going to wipe off most of it just like that. You barely want any paint on your brush at all. That's why it's called dry brushing. And yeah, you're just going to wipe off some of that like so. There we go. This is actually pretty similar to what we did with the Mancubus and the Revenants, the Mancubi and the Revenants, only instead of the Warlock Purple, we have like a blood red color uh, for the core. And this time we've got sort of a pink color, and this will make it look a little bit less fleshy and peely, and a little bit more just sort of like tender tissue. Uh, that's the sort of thing that you're going to go for right here. And yeah, you're just going to dry brush like so, and that's just going to soften up that flesh pretty substantially. Uh, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll bring it up again. When you're dry brushing, uh, you want to sort of like look at, you know, like if we look at the spine here, you want to do your brush strokes parallel, not parallel, perpendicular 
to any of the sort of like indentations and all of the, the changes in uh, depth from the miniature. In this particular case here, there's really, really prominent sort of like um, mus muscle tissue that goes up to the spine coming from the shoulders like that. So there's a lot of sort of like creases and crevices in between each of those points, you know, sort of like, like this, right? And you want to go against those. You don't want to go with them because the whole point of dry brushing is that you get this paint onto the high recesses of the miniatures. And if you put your brush strokes um, perpendicular or parallel to all of those low lines, then your bristles are gonna get into those lower recesses and you want to avoid that. So whenever you're dry brushing, always go perpend or perpendicular to all of your lines and definitions, never parallel with them. Always like this, never like this, okay? But we're just gonna we're just gonna soften up all of the tissue now. All of the all of the warlock purple that we just did, we're gonna use this barbarian flesh, and that will just soften it up a little bit. Alright, and there we go. Like I said, that just sort of softens up all of the tissue surrounding the head like that. Here we go. So that just gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more color variety. And we're gonna do that with all the other uh, fleshy bits. Again, it might be kind of tricky to get into some places. Like, um, for example, in between the thighs right here, in between the thigh and the sort of like groin piece right here, that's pretty much impossible. Don't worry about it, just do the best that you can. Just try to do the points where you know that you can get your brush, stro uh, brush strokes pretty efficiently and pretty well. That's all that you really need to worry about because when we go over everything with a shade later on, um, and when we touch up the chitin on you know either side of those pieces right there, you're gonna see a little bit of pink in there, but not a whole lot. So you don't need to worry about the pink being too bright or distracting or anything like that. So only only really worry about where you can get your brush to. And if you're having trouble getting your brush into specific recesses or specific points, don't even worry about it because when we, uh, when we touch up stuff later on, I don't think you're even really gonna notice. All right, and that is pretty much it. Like I said, that just softens up the flesh. That adds a little bit more of an actual sort of fleshy look to it. And yeah, it's still, uh, with that pink, it makes everything look sort of like, you know, tender and soft and all that. So that looks great. I like that a lot. So we're going to rinse off our brush. All right, and before I do anything else, actually, I kind of decided I want to bring out that exposed fleshy gut sort of thing a little bit. So what, what all I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take out some dragon red and I'm gonna go over all of that, all of that flesh part with this dragon red color. And that's, that's pretty much all that I'm going to do with that. And then we'll worry about the next step after that. There we go, just something as simple as that, you know, that just sort of makes it look a little bit bloody. That's all that we really need right there. All right, next up, what we're actually going to do before we touch up the chitin is I want to touch up all of the cybernetic bits. Because I think it's going to be easier to start with the cyber stuff and then work your way out to the chitin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some plate mail uh, metal right here. Yeah, plate, plate mail metal. Yeah, plate mail metal. And we're going to use that to just go over all of the various tubes, wires, cybernetic bits, all of all of the metallic stuff throughout the miniature, and I am going to get a slightly more detailed brush, nothing nothing too huge. I'll just take out a, a standard sized Reaper round brush here, and yeah, we're just gonna go over all of the cyber stuff. Let's start with the, uh, with the chest here, the um, Argent Accumulator, I think, is what this is. There we go, we just get the chest there. All right, and then from there, you're just gonna sort of look around and Look for anything that might be cybernetic, and just touch up all of that. So we'll start with this kneecap right here. That's very clearly cybernetic. All right, that's it for the kneecap right there. Let's continue to work our way down and let's get these sort of toes right here, all of these cybernetic toes coming out.
All right, so there we go. Now we've just got the the front of the of the feet like that. And then, like I said earlier, he's got sort of like, yeah, it's weird. It's like he's wearing wearing some raised heels almost in the form of like a cybernetic attachment. I think is what this is supposed to be. So let's just put that on the heel back here. All right, and then, like I said, that sort of you know almost piston coming out of the actual Achilles tendon. All right, then easy as that. All right, so now let's just do some more searching around. I don't think there's anything... Yeah, the entire left leg is pretty much completely untouched from any cybernetic um, influence, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so we'll just sort of work our way up a little bit, and I don't think there's anything on the waist or on the hips or anything like that. So let's come up to the left side of the chest, because there's a big sort of coil that comes around, starting right here, and then it comes all the way back to the back. All right, that's it for that. That's pretty straightforward. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think that the coil sort of blends into the actual, like, chitin. You can kind of tell this sort of, like, piece is meant to be one single uh, piece of the chitin. So I would say, you know, you might be tempted to sort of go over... Well, shoot, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. I'll tell you what, I think that I will just go over the top of this... I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not, but hey, screw it. I don't think anybody's gonna matter or care if it looks a little bit wonky in this one particular spot. And besides, if I need to, I'll go over that with the uh, with the green color later on. Yeah, pretty much. I need to. Yeah, I, I do need to touch up that spot right there. But yeah, I would say that that's all probably just one coil. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then there are a bunch of uh, sort of coils and, and cables coming out from the arm cannon to the chest. So let's get those. I think that that's pretty much it. I think it's just those two major coils right there, and I think that that will be okay. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the back. I think that basically this whole sort of back piece, starting with like the shoulder blades and the center of the spine, I think that that's all metallic. So let's just go over the entirety of it. Here's one thing that I, I think this sort of bit right here in between the flesh and the chitin, I think that that, or in between the, uh, the, the cyber bit and the chitin, I think that's supposed to be flesh. But I don't think it's going to be a huge deal if you just interpret it as chitin, if you just interpret it as the natural armor that the cyber demon has. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just worry about getting the cyber bit right here, and I think that that's pretty much all that will really matter. And then I'm going to use a larger brush just to touch up the rest of that, because I don't want to use a smaller brush just to go over a wide surface area like that. Okay, so that's pretty much the back. We got the chest, you know, we've got the, the argent accumulator right there. We got the tubes, the knee, the toes. Um, that's pretty much it. But let's go over the arm cannon, which uh, I'm not super worried about detail-wise, so I will just up my brush size a little bit. All right, so I'll just go back to using a, a larger brush that I was using for, like, the chitin and the flesh and all that. I got pretty much all of the details that I wanted to worry about. I really only wanted to make sure that the... Um, the steel color blended with all of the flesh bits really well and now that I've gotten all of that pretty much taken care of yeah I'll just I'll just up my brush size a little bit to knock this out a little bit faster all right and then now a lot of the arm cannon is actually like a like a brass or bronze color but I think that the actual sort of joint is steel so we'll go over that sort of surrounding this big sort of like wheel part of the joint I think is meant to be steel 
All right, and then I think that all of the side bits, all of the sort of small detail work, I think is basically all steel. All right, now this, this sort of like part of the arm cannon that's got sort of a tube coming out of it, I would say go over that with the steel color. Like I said, the rest of the arm cannon, most of it is gonna be that, that brass color or that bronze color that we're gonna use, but I think that this sort of like tube on the side here is probably nice and metal, like so. And then I think that the actual end of the arm cannon itself is going to be steel colored, like that. So Doom Eternal has been out now for about a week, and I've, uh, I've played it a whole heck of a lot. I, uh, I beat it once, I'm about to beat a second playthrough again now too. I like it, I don't know if I like it as much as Doom 2016 just because Doom 2016 had a, a really, really nice complete package for me. Uh, you know, even though Snap Map didn't end up lasting long term very much, it was still very much a fun thing to play with for a long time. Um, and even then, I still sort of think about, like, different ideas and stuff like that, but it's just, uh, anyway. Uh, and, and I liked the multiplayer of Doom 2016. I know that that's sort of an unpopular opinion. It was really just sort of a really generic sort of deathmatch mode. But, you know, in a lot of ways, a Doom game without deathmatch just doesn't seem right in some way. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of how I feel about Doom Eternal, is that I don't, I don't care for that battle mode very much. It's okay, it's fine. Uh, but I don't love it, and I do kind of miss having regular, you know, deathmatch. So that's uh, one sort of opinion that I have of it. But uh, where I was getting getting to specifically was that I noticed that the uh, the tyrant, which is one of the types of uh, demons that you can fight, I think it's supposed to be sort of like a stand-in for the cyber demon. It's like the new cyber demon. It even has the same like arm cannon. I've noticed, you know, the the sort of like five-barreled thing there on the on uh, on the end of the arm cannon and uh I, I i don't know how i feel about the fact that what that basically means is that the cyber demon from 2016 is just no longer a thing like at all uh they don't they don't acknowledge it they don't uh they don't refer to it in any of the lore i don't think it just sort of stops being a thing and from what I understand, the a lot of the, the lore and, and stuff like that in 2016 was um, uh, sort of indicating that the that the Cyber Demon was like a reincarnated Balgar demon, which is not exactly a subtle reference to the Balrog from uh, the Lord of the Rings, which is fine. Like that's not that's not taking a jab at it or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it was supposed to be like a whole thing. And then uh, it just sort of stops existing. Like, they just sort of stop caring about it. I also think... I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, I'm rambling on about Doom Eternal right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that a lot of the lore that you could find in Doom 2016 sort of implied that Doom Guy was the betrayer and that his son was the one that uh, became the Icon of Sin. And in Eternal... It's like they rewrite it to be like some guy that's there pretty early on. It's like he's the betrayer, and you interact with him for like a minute, and then you never talk to him ever again. And it was just kind of like, wait, what? And it seemed like they did that almost to retcon the character of Doom Guy so that they could rewrite his whole backstory for Eternal. I'll avoid spoilers there, but uh, anyway, just think. again, I might be wrong about that. But if anybody, if anybody wants to clarify in the comments, feel free to do so. Anyway, I've gone on about Doom Eternal enough. We finished up the Cyber Demons um, metallic bits there, or at least all of the uh, steel colored bits. Like I said, I, I, I went with the with the joints. Uh, those are basically all going to be metallic silver kind of thing, and then everything else we're going to use. You know, so like the, the joint there, kind of wrapping around, the tube work coming up, the tube there, the end of the barrel, and then a little bit on the side here. Uh, those are all metallic, and the rest of it we're going to do with a bronze color. Why don't we just move on? And what we'll move on to is we're, we're finally going to touch up all that chitin, which I've talked about off and on throughout the entirety of the video so far. So we'll go back to our angel green color, which is what we used for the base coat. 
And now we're just going to use that to touch up all of the various parts surrounding the miniature that we might have uh, gone a little bit crazy with. So like, uh, for example, here we go. Uh, like for example, the, the shoulder pad right here, that's supposed to be all green and it's got some pink and some flesh on it. So let's just go over that. I wouldn't worry about any particular brush. I would just use whatever is the most comfortable for you right now. There we go, that's all we're doing. We're just we're just cleaning up the details like that, and then we're going to move on from there. All right, I think that that's pretty much everything that I wanted to do. Yeah, like I said, I just sort of cleaned up the armor and went over all of the various parts of the chitin and all that and just made sure that those were touched up and, and detailed. And I think that those are looking pretty darn good. I'm not worried about the arm right there because I'm going to go over that with the brass color. I am going to, however, just look around the entirety of the miniature to make sure I didn't miss anything really substantial. Like there's kind of a spot on the back of the leg here. There we go, and that is pretty much it. I feel like all of the parts that need to be really... Diff oh, really big spot on the side of the leg here. Look at it from all angles. Make sure to look at your miniature from all angles to make sure that you didn't miss something really, really bright or obvious, like I just did right there. I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so now that we've got a lot of the major stuff, we're, we're really just gonna do some detail work and then we're gonna do some, you know, like varnishes and uh, uh, washes and then we're pretty much done. Like we've got all of the major work for him out of the way. He's already looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to an elven flesh color right here. And we're gonna use this uh, in a similar way to all of the other miniatures that we've done for the Doom board game so far, which is that we're gonna use this for like the teeth and the like nails and talons. We're also gonna use it on the on the rib cage that's kind of showing right there. I'll start with the teeth. Um, just make sure that you have another, you know, pointed brush, whatever whatever kind you prefer. And similarly to a lot of the other monsters, the teeth are really really big and really prominent, so they're not terribly difficult. And you don't need to worry about getting them perfect. You just want to get the the basic shape of each tooth. Should be. Pretty straightforward. There you go, just a little something like that for the teeth. That's really all that you need right there. That'll do just fine. And then yeah, we'll uh, we'll also just go ahead and get this this rib cage down here too. This will just make it clear that there's some exposed bone here. This actually reminds me of. Um, I, I will say one thing about Doom Eternal one more time. <laughs> Just gonna come on back to Doom Eternal for just a minute. I do really, 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 really like the the damage and gore system. I mean, not just because you know, oh, it's it's cool because it's bloody and gory. No, because it's it's actually a really, really good, efficient like player feedback system. You know, being able to uh, sort of identify pretty quickly how much damage you've dealt to a particular monster by how messed up it looks is really, really satisfying and really intuitive and helpful and cool. You know, they had it a little bit in, like, Doom 2016, but it was mostly just, like, the the monsters would all just get, like, you know, a, a layer of blood on them, basically. There would just be, like, kind of blood splatter on the on the parts of them that you damaged. So, you know, you, you got, the, you know, the sort of effect of how much damage you dealt to any particular monster in Doom 2016. But the fact that, like, you can really, like, chip away at their flesh and expose bone and, and, and really go all out on it is really, really, really amazing... Um, engine technology, actually. It's it's really, really, really cool and really well done. So that's all that I'll say about uh, Doom Eternal. But yeah, there you go. So you just want a little bit of a rib cage like that. You don't need to worry too much about getting it perfect. You just kind of want to get the basic gist of it. Like so. That will be just fine right there. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with uh, his, his toes here. His big sort of Cyber Demon Talon toes on his left leg right here. All right, there we go. Just as simple as that. That will do just fine. 
And then next up, we're going to move on to the actual arm cannon. And for that, we're going to use Weapon Bronze. It's just going to be a nice bronze color. All right, not a huge deal. What brush you use, just use whatever one is comfortable for you. Basically, all the parts that, you, uh, that we haven't already painted with the silver color, we're going to use on the bronze color. All right, and that is pretty much it for the arm cannon, I would say. And that is pretty much it. We're gonna go over with a wash, and then after we go over with a wash, we're gonna do a varnish. Well, okay, so after we, we do the, the wash with the quick shade, we're gonna do the eyes real quick. We're just gonna dot them really quickly. And then we're gonna do the varnish, and then that'll be it. Now we are actually going to use a couple of different quick shades. For this particular, I got some of that uh, bronze color on my finger. Uh, we are going to use a couple of sh of quick shades for this particular miniature because we've got a lot of flesh. And we've got a lot of cybernetic stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to use strong tone for all of the flesh and the chitin and all that good stuff, and then we're going to use dark tone for the actual arm cannon. All right, and I think that I'm going to go ahead and uh, thin that down a little bit too. So I'll take you know my water here and my brush, and I'll just get some water in there, and then mix that in there and that'll just thin it down a little bit make it a little bit easier to manage and all that all right then yeah like i said we're gonna go over all of the all of the flesh all of the armor and all that try to avoid the cybernetic components as you go in this particular case like you know the argent accumulator on his chest try to avoid that if you can but then just go over everything else I'm realizing now that I uh, forgot to touch up a little bit on that shoulder right there. Oh well, a little, little tiny, tiny oops moment, but uh, I don't think it'll take away from the overall look of the miniature. We'll, uh, we'll leave that in there as just sort of another bit of practice for, you know what, whatever. Don't obsess over every single little detail. Do the best that you can. Sometimes you might miss some things, but that's only because you're human. It's just kind of inevitable to, to be a little bit imperfect. That's just who we are as people. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I think that the miniature will look just fine. All right. That's pretty much it for all of the strong tone. That's just got a little bit of a, of a brownish sort of tint to it. And I think that that will help pretty well with all of the flesh and the chitin and all that good stuff. So now we're going to move on to our next quick shade. And for that, we're going to use this dark tone right here. And this, this is just a nice sort of like black shade, basically. That's all that this really is. And this I found just is a little bit better, I would say, for te technological components, you know, armor, cybernetic stuff, all that kind of, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so we're going to use that on the arm cannon, as well as the, the knee and the toes there, the Argent Accumulator, and the thing on the back. Need to get out a little bit more for the arm cannon. All right, so I'm just gonna use the rest of this on uh, this arm cannon right here. And then after that, I would say definitely let him completely dry before moving on to the, the face and the varnish that you're going to use and all that good stuff. So go ahead and apply this evenly to the arm cannon and then let him dry. All right, and that is pretty much it. All we're going to do is just touch up with some uh, little tiny detail work, not even really super tiny, but just detail work. And we're going to highlight those eyes as well as the Argent Accumulator and the arm cannon. And to do that, we're going to use some demonic yellow. I'm going to start with the eyes, so just make sure you have a really, really sharp point brush. Doesn't matter what kind, just as long as you've got a sharp point on it. And we're going to start with the more obvious eyes, which are the ones right underneath the sort of crown that he has. And that one right there. Now the other thing too is that the Cyber Demon is weird. He's actually got four eyes. He doesn't have two, he has four. The two on uh, either side of his face are uh, kind of small and kind of weird. So just make sure that you look at it carefully. You can see it pretty clearly on this one, if I can get at the angle just right. 
And there you go, those are the eyes on the Cyber Demon. Simple as that, that's all you really need to do. Alright, yeah, just like that. Kind of weird. Again, he's got he's got multiple eyes, which is just kind of a weird sort of creature design, but that's what he's got. All right, and then we're going to do a similar thing with the Argent Accumulator. Let's make that a nice glowing sort of color. Right in the center, just like that. And then the small ones all around, you're just going to dot once. There you go, and that'll about do it for that one right there. And then we're just going to do the very end of the actual arm cannon. We're going to get each of these little tiny barrels kind of surrounding it. Another thing that you can do is you can actually take like a red color. You know, you could take like dragon red or pure red or something like that. And, you know, do the same thing where you, you know, uh, do the end of each major barrel like that. And then go over with yellow around, you know, like this or on the centers of each one. And that will sort of, like, define it a little bit more so. That's just something that you can do. Uh, I don't think that you would have to worry about it if, if you're not that concerned about it. I would just do the, the single layer of yellow if you want to just keep it simple. But it is something that you could do if you want to uh, get a little bit of extra credit. All right, a little something like that for the end of the barrel, and that will pretty much do it. If you want to, also, you could do the same thing with, like, the back right here. You could, you know, kind of dot the backs. I think these are supposed to be sort of like a, a jet propulsion system, but I'm not going to worry about it. So, I'm just going to leave it like that. Next thing that we're going to do after that is we're actually just going to knock out that base really quickly. You know, because we just got a lot of, you know, stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. If we had done the base before doing the rest of this, th this would have come up as uh, pretty darn... Uh, Oh, I don't really know what the word would be. It, it, it would come off as, as pretty darn messy. So, yeah, we're just going to take uh, some matte black and we're just going to go over the base with that. All right, and that will pretty much do it. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a layer of varnish over the entirety of the miniature. And the thing that I figured we would do a little bit differently about this one compared to the other ones is that we are going to, to add a varnish just for the sake of adding a little bit of a shine to it, as well as adding an extra layer of protection. But I figure rather than use the gloss varnish that we've been using, because this is still like pretty much the best thing that you can get, I figured we would do a little bit of a, uh, call it a life hack. I don't, well, I don't know if it's a life hack. I don't, I don't know what the word for it is. But uh, it's something that I have sort of experimented with for a number of miniatures and for a number of you know, scenery things and that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, well, let me just get to it. So, you can actually buy Elmer's Clear Glue. It is exactly what it looks like, it's just a clear glue. And what you can do is you can water this down pretty substantially, much more than you would the regular, you know, varnish, because this is pretty thin right here. This is already very liquid-like, and this is very, very thick, very, very syrupy, almost. But if you take this and then you water it down, it's actually a really, really good varnish. So what we'll do is we'll just get out a fair bit of it here. Get that nozzle free. There we go. Excellent. I've, I've used a lot of this already. And that's the thing is that, you know, this was a dollar. And it's it's like, I mean, it's so much. It's so much. You know, this this little bottle right here costs like three or four dollars. Likewise, this was one dollar and is so much more. So we're going to get out a pretty substantial amount of it here. You know what, actually, rather than do that right there, why don't we do that? Here we go. Let me, let me do something else. Sorry. Back up. Just a second. I'll actually uh, uh, use it separately here. I'm just going to take, like, the bottom of a base right here. This is just a random base, and this will serve as, like, something of a little bowl, almost. So I'll put that right there. And then we'll put that right there. Like I said, get out, get out a pretty substantial amount of it. Don't be afraid to go crazy. All right. Make sure you get yourself a really big brush. All right, this is just a really, really nice large brush right here. All right, and then we're going to take our water, try to get everything in frame. Uh, and like I said, you're going to substantially water this down. Really, really just just get a lot of water into that into that brush. And then it's a little bit hard to, to tell on camera, actually. <laughs> I guess this base was maybe a little, little bit uh, a little dark. Anyway, that's okay. Um, yeah, just mix it up until it gets a little bit of a, of a thinner sort of texture to it. And then you can just go over the entirety of the miniature. I'm going to do the base with a matte varnish because the thing that's really cool about this Elmer's Clear Glue is that when you water it down like I have here and then you apply it like a varnish, it is it is much more of a gloss varnish than it is a matte varnish. So just keep that in mind, but that's okay because I'm okay with this having a little bit of a, of a shine to it, a little bit of a glossy sort of look to it. And 
It also might take a little bit longer to dry than a standard varnish. And you might notice too, as you apply it, it might get like pretty, pretty thick and almost kind of sticky a little bit. Don't be afraid to just water it down a little bit more. But uh, yeah, this, this stuff actually works pretty darn well. Like I said, I've used it for a lot of scenery. I've got some, uh, like I bought um, just sort of on my own, I bought a scenery pack from that uh, Marvel miniatures game, Crisis Protocol. I bought the New York City terrain pack, and I'll show that off here a little bit too after I finish this too. Um, and I and I painted those, and I used this this Elmer's glue actually as a varnish for all of those, and they came out pretty nice, and they're really 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 thick and sturdy. Like I don't think that uh, the the paint is going to be chipping off anytime soon. Yeah, just apply this evenly. Like I said, don't be afraid to really, really water down your brush because you do want this to be thin. You want it to be thin enough that you can apply it like it's a varnish, like it's just a, you know, a coat. Uh, but if you don't water it down at all, it's going to be very, very thick. Just make sure not to get this on the actual base because it is pretty thick and if you apply it onto a flat surface, it does tend to show up a lot more than if you were to put it onto, you know, a, a, a multi, multi-layered, multi-textured, or whatever, you know, like an actual model. So just try to avoid getting it on the actual base. It's not going to be in the end of the world if you, if, if you do get some on there, don't worry about it. Uh, but, you know, just something to keep in mind. All right, just kind of look around and make sure that you got everywhere all over the whole miniature. Just look for any spots that might not be shiny or that might not have the same consistency as everything else. I think that I'm in pretty good shape here. Yeah, I think that we're coming along just fine. Okay, yeah, I think that that will work out just fine. And this should also just wash off of your brush pretty easily, like, uh, like you would just in water. So just kind of, you know... Twist it about against your, uh, you know, your cup of water right there like that. And then, however, I am just going to go ahead and use the, the regular anti-shine matte varnish on the base. And that will just sort of make it, you know, consistent with the rest of the bases that uh, we've done for the Doom board game thus far. And then, that's it. You are all done after that. All right, well, there you go, everybody. That is the Cyber Demon from the Doom board game. He's a big boy, and he's nice and shiny with that really weird, <laughs> you know, with that, uh, you know, uh, Elmer's Clear Glue makes for a really good gloss varnish. If you don't like the gloss, you can obviously just use a regular matte varnish. It's whatever you prefer. In retrospect, too, I'm also looking at the rib cage right there, and I feel like I might have, uh, may maybe should have used just the regular Barbarian flesh color for that, but, you know, that's up to you. Whatever, whatever you want to do. If you want to, if you want to bring it out a little bit more, use the Elven flesh. If you want to make it blend a little bit more with the rest of the miniature, go ahead and use Barbarian flesh, but it's whatever you prefer. That is it. And I figured I would show you you too. These are all of the terrain pieces that I uh, used that clear glue on as a varnish, and they they look pretty nice, I would say. I think that they actually look pretty darn okay, if I don't say so myself. I'm pretty proud of these of these little traffic lights right here. These are just a little, you know, one is one is a red light, you know, red light, red light, green light, you know. It was a little, little tiny thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. So again, if you like the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the Resident Evil 2 board game on all of those miniatures getting painted, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I think that's going to be the next project that I tackle. One thing that I am considering doing is I'm considering doing a live stream from this channel, actually, of all of the uh, miniatures from the Doom board game, basically playing the Doom board game, just playing like a round with myself, basically, because I'm weird. I'm a weird person. Uh, but yeah, and then just sort of showing off the uh, the miniatures and, and what it looks like to have them all finished. If you are interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments. And if nobody cares, then that's fine too, you know, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see it, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you know, whatever. But I don't think that I'll take up any more of your time. That is it. That's the big boy. That is the Cyber Demon. And I think that he is looking pretty darn okay. Let's go ahead and look at him from the back here. Yeah. There we go. 
He's looking a little bit, a little bit more fleshy back there, which makes sense because he's, uh, you know, the flesh is all the weak stuff, and and the chitin is all of the armor, and that's all the green. Uh, and yeah, that'll be it. So I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.